Hey guys, it's Depper here and can you believe it? It's fall once again. As you can see, I'm wearing my beanie or toque to get in the mode. Um, finally, the warm weather's ended and it's getting colder here in Finland, but I kind of like it. You get to wear wool sweaters and beanies again. But man, oh man, this summer has been crazy or this whole year this far has been crazy. I've traveled this year to Australia, Paris, Canada, USA, Italy, France, Norway, England, and there's still a few more trips to come. It feels so good to kind of just be at home, be a little bit more relaxed, get into things. And I really wanted to get back into this wedding series because this year I have shot a total of 27 weddings. So, and today I want to specifically talk to you about shooting wedding prep. So this is the time of the day when the bride and groom are getting ready. And I personally really like shooting this part of the wedding because it's kind of like the behind the scenes that no one else gets to see. So whether I'm doing wedding photography or filmmaking, I really want to have this documentary feel. I want to be able to show this behind the scenes of what the bride was going through in the morning, what the groom was going through, the nervousness, the excitement, the tears, because often you know they're sending each other little gifts and letters in the morning. And it's really nice to get that into the wedding film or into the photography because you're able to show a part of the wedding day that none of the guests have got to see. So let's get into the nitty gritty of how I shoot wedding prep. First off, gear. I usually will use a 35 millimeter or 50 millimeter. And the reason is sometimes I might need a little bit wider with 35 millimeter, but it's still not gonna distort the bride's or the groom's face. Or sometimes I need to get a little bit closer with 50 millimeter. But anything more than that, I feel like it's just too tight when you're shooting in a hotel room or in some uh, guest house somewhere. Usually there's not too much room. But I don't like to go too wide like the 16 to 35 because, well, you can easily start distorting and you don't want a distorted bride's face. So maybe stick to the 35 or the 50 millimeter. And as well, with the 35 or 50, you're able to get a nice uh, high aperture like 1.4, 1.8 to really just blur out the background. Sometimes you might be shooting a hotel room where the background's not too interesting. So having a high aperture, you can then kind of blur out the background and put more of the focus on the bride or the groom. So usually when I get to the hotel or wherever the bride and groom are getting ready, the first thing that I do is I look at the lighting. So when you walk into a room, look at what kind of light sources there are. There might be the, the window over there and then there's a lights on in the hotel room. And what you want to do and you want to be really polite about this is you just want to ask the bride and groom or the makeup artist or the hairstylist, that, hey, is it okay if I just turn off the inside lights? And the reason why I do this is the best kind of light that you want to use is natural light. So if you have a window, use the window. But you don't want to mix the window light with the tungsten light, for example, because it's just going to go crazy and your camera's not going to be able to handle it. So turn off the lights and to the eye it might look a little bit darker, a little dim in the room. But that's okay because once you show them your epic photos or your video footage in the morning prep when you have just the window natural light, they're going to be okay with it. And you know, sometimes you might walk into the room and the makeup and the hairstyles have maybe put them into a corner somewhere where there isn't that natural light. And once again, it's a lot about just working together as a team and just asking, hey, for me, photography or video wise, it's a lot better if they're sitting in front of the window light. So just politely ask them to move to the window light. And these are just really small tips, but these will help you get really amazing photos and video footage. You know, a lot of times when you start the wedding day, you're maybe a little bit nervous, not thinking so clearly and you might just walk in there and just start shooting right away, but it's better to kind of pause for a moment, look around, assess the kind of environment and what kind of lighting you're working with, and set up the lighting first, and then you're just gonna have a way better morning shooting rather than the whole morning fighting and wondering like, why aren't these photos turning out the way I want them to be? So guys, when you're shooting wedding prep, use 35 millimeter, 50 millimeter, and make sure you're using natural light. And the last tip that I'll give you is, is Try to get creative. You know, with the wedding prep, uh, there's a lot of time to get creative. I love to shoot through mirrors. I love to frame the bride, you know, in front of a painting or something. And you can get really creative during the wedding prep because it's not too stressful, it's not too fast paced, it's pretty chill. So you kind of have time just to get creative, try different things. So guys, use a 35 millimeter, 50 millimeter, make sure you shoot with natural light and get creative. Try something new. Try to frame the couple, try to use maybe a glass that you're shooting through, shoot through mirrors, do whatever comes to mind because why not? It's the perfect opportunity to get creative and try new things. 
So for all you guys trying to get into wedding photography or videography or whether you're just a filmmaker, you're trying to figure out what will be your first paid jobs. You know, maybe you're not gonna do wedding photography or filmmaking forever, but it's a great place to start and learn. So take these tips, go out and smash that wedding, get some amazing photos, video footage. Feel free to send them to me because yeah, I love to be able to just give you constructive feedback. It's always amazing to help other filmmakers and photographers. Guys, if you like these quick pro tips for weddings, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. There's gonna be more wedding pro tips to come because I'm right now doing a wedding series after my whole summer of weddings. A lot to teach you guys about that. Hopefully this helped. We'll see you next week.